there was one thing that exemplified retro gaming, it was licensed titles. I've said it many times, if it was popular in the 90s, it had a game made of it. The problem is, how do you convert some franchises to games? Sure, things like Terminator could just be action games, but there are some franchises out there that really didn't lend themselves well to the world of gaming. So, publishers and developers had to get creative. Beat-em-ups, minigame collections, flying through rings, whatever they were going for in E.T. There were all sorts of franchise and genre mashups, in the hopes of seeing something click. But then we have the curious case of the Crazy Castle games, a series of games that had very little gameplay innovation, but instead chose to spend its time trying to drag in as many franchises as possible. The game was the brainchild of Kemco, a Japanese company that not only developed games for numerous consoles, but published even more. Their game list doesn't have any huge hits on it, but it's absolutely packed with licensed titles, with everything from Superman to Blues Brothers. But it's when we get to the Crazy Castle games that things get really interesting. The first Crazy Castle game, released in 1989 for the NES and Famicom, was released in the US as The Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle, bringing the iconic Looney Tune as the main star. But there was a big difference between the US and Japan releases. In Japan, the game wasn't based on Bugs Bunny, but on an entirely different rabbit, Roger Rabbit. Yes, the series began as a spin-off of the iconic Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but due to Capcom having the rights to Disney characters, and there already being a Roger Rabbit game in the US, Kemco instead chose to swap one bunny for another and have Bugs be the face of the franchise. The game was then ported to Game Boy and got another makeover. Capcom's usage of Disney characters didn't extend to Japan, so Kemco gave the franchise another facelift. It became Mickey Mouse, based on the iconic Disney mascot. The Game Boy version was popular enough to get a sequel, Mickey Mouse 2, or as it was known in the US, Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle 2. But now Europe decided to get in on the odd franchising, and thus the game became Hugo, based on the European cartoon Hugo the Troll. In terms of what franchise Crazy Castle represented, things were a bit of a mess at this point, and from here, the series only got crazier. The third game in the series continued in Japan under the Mickey Mouse banner, and in fact would remain that way for the next three games. But Kemco, in an attempt to create their own franchise, rebranded the series as Kid Clown in the US, part of their short-lived Kid Clown series. Game 4 gets even odder, because while Mickey still headed up the franchise in Japan, in the US it got rebranded under the real Ghostbusters, who were quite popular at the time, but if that wasn't odd enough, in the UK where the Ghostbusters weren't as popular, it got another rebrand, this time to Garfield Labyrinth, based on the cartoon and comic. By the time Game 5 came around, it seems like things were getting less confusing. Across the board, Crazy Castle 5 was branded under Mickey Mouse. That cohesiveness lasted all of one game. It was back to being Kid Clown for the next Game Boy release, which got remade as a Game Boy Color game back under the Bugs Bunny brand. But due to Bugs being missing from the franchise for a while, the game was now known as Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle 3, despite technically being the seventh game in the franchise. We had one more brief moment of cohesion for the next release, Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle 4, the eighth game in the series, but things immediately became confusing again. The next game was indeed called Crazy Castle 5, but it was now called Woody Woodpecker in Crazy Castle 5, keeping the new numbering convention, but changing the franchise yet again. And after that, one final game in the series was released, simply known as Crazy Castle, a generic game made for flip phones without any franchise attached to it, before the series quietly disappeared along with Kemco themselves. For a game series that barely innovated gameplay for over a decade and wasn't even that much fun to begin with, Crazy Castle left quite the interesting mark on gaming for just how many names ended up tied to it. Maybe it wasn't the best game or the most memorable, but it's a rare breed of gaming, one that at least does deserve a place in the history books. A simple little game that through one way or another ended up representing so many different franchises. And that is your Retro Rapid Fire. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for regular gaming videos two times a week from shows like Dollar Store Gaming, Game Boy Roulette, Retro Rapid Fire, and 10 Things You Missed. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.